Hi, this is Erling with Travel Trail Sail. Well, we've been out raking leaves. Unfortunately, the leaves are falling and our camping season is coming to an end for the year. So we need to winterize our travel trailer to make sure that it doesn't have any freeze damage over the winter. Now, if you live in South Carolina or Georgia or someplace south, uh, you might be able to simply blow your lines out with compressed air and call it good. But where I'm at in the mid-Atlantic, it does tend to freeze often enough in the winter that it's worth going ahead and winterizing the camper. And of course, if you live up north, you definitely need to take those steps. So uh, usually you can get some pink RV antifreeze. Two gallons or less should do it for most campers. And what we're going to do is drain our lines out and then shut off so that the hot water heater is not part of the, the water circulation. Then we'll fill the lines with pink antifreeze and that's it until next summer when hopefully we can be out camping and enjoying our time in the woods. So hopefully on your last camping trip you remembered to go ahead and empty out your black and gray tanks really well. And during the summer season, maybe you'd put a pot in your black tank and a gallon of water. Well, on the last camping trip, you probably don't want to do that because we don't want to have any standing water that could freeze. Uh, so that's step number one, is on your last camping trip, make sure that you empty out your tanks really, really well and that they're all drained. Then from there, we're going to uh, find our hot water heater. Again, it looks something like this. You find a grate and it'll say hot on it. Uh, what we're gonna do is open that up. We're gonna find the plastic uh, plug that goes into the hot water heater. And with the right wrench, we're gonna go ahead and take that plug out, let the water drain out of the water heater, and uh, then we'll put the plug back in so we don't lose it. But we want to make sure that that water heater is all drained. So that's step number two. Step number one was empty your tanks well. Step number two, let's empty the hot water heater. So we're going to go ahead and drain the water heater. Let's open this compartment up. And your water heater probably looks something like this. It has some pipes and things, but what you're looking for is a white plastic plug. And we can take that plug out to go ahead and drain the water out of the water heater. It'll be about six gallons. Uh, what you'll want to use is uh, one of two choices. You could use a 15 16 inch wrench like this to get at that plastic plug. Or if you happen to have a ratchet that has an extension on it, that's another way. But you need to be able to work around the pipes that are here and take that white plug out. Uh, if you want the water to drain a little flat, a little faster, now that water is going to come glug, glug, glugging out of here. But there's a pressure release valve that you can open up and that'll help the water drain a little faster. But still it may take 10 minutes to get it all the way drained. So let's go ahead and take that plug out and we'll let the water drain. I usually like to put the plug back once it's drained so I don't lose it. The next step in winterizing your RV is to drain water from the water lines. You're going to want to look for the low point drain valve. Yours might simply be a white hose coming from the bottom of your RV, or like mine, you might have red and blue. What you'll do is find those, uh, and there's a lever on there that will turn to be in line with the hose. Uh, so you turn it a quarter of a turn to open it up and drain out any water that is in there. Now, usually water will come out once you open that up, uh, sometimes a little, sometimes a lot, but you just leave them open for a while until all the water has drained out. Your camper may also have a valve that looks like this. It says potable water valve on it. 
and maybe another way to drain some water from the lines. Simply pull this handle open to make sure that water comes out. And just like the low point drains, let as much water drain out as possible. To get to the water heater bypass and the antifreeze suction hose, you'll need to find where your water heater bypass valve is. And it's often in a different place than every camper. Sometimes it's under a bed or behind a cabinet. In our grand design, it's behind this panel. There's two screws, and we just take those out. And now we can see all of the hoses uh, for our camper. Once you have the valves set so that water has bypassed the water heater and the suction hose is open, then you're ready to start adding antifreeze to your RV's pipes. You simply do this by opening each faucet one by one, the cold and then the hot, until you see pink coming through, which means the antifreeze has reached that faucet. So you'll do that throughout each of the faucets. Now, to do that, you'll turn your water pump on, and the water pump on-off switch is usually on the master control panel for your RV, along with things like maybe the awning, the slide, uh, and the gauges that show how full your tanks are. So look for the water pump, uh, and you're gonna wanna turn that on, and you can put the suction hose directly into a bottle of antifreeze. Uh, typically, the hose will go directly into the bottle, but if for some reason, for example, you have something installed on the end of that hose uh, that, that does not fit into the bottle of antifreeze, just use a small basin of some sort, pour the antifreeze into that, and then you can suck it in. The only thing is you'll want to make sure not to run the water pump dry. So you'll, you're going to need to keep refilling that little basin uh, as often as needed to make sure that good liquid is, is being pulled into the system. So that's it. We're going to turn on our water pump and start uh, to winterize. If you have an outside shower or a sprayer port, make sure to run some antifreeze through that as well. For a bit of added protection on our holding tanks, the black and gray tanks, I like to pour the leftover antifreeze into the tanks. So once I've made sure all of the lines have pink antifreeze in them, all of the faucets are uh, flowing pink, then I pour the rest of the antifreeze into the toilet and each of the drains so that there's a little bit of extra protection in there in case any water was left in the tanks. Now you'll want to do that with the water pump turned off, otherwise your pump will continue to try and get more antifreeze. For example, when you try and flush the toilet, you're opening that up to pour the antifreeze in, but the pump will still be calling for more water or air or whatever it can get. So best turn off the water pump and then use up the last little bit of antifreeze to fill in the tanks. I'm all done winterizing the travel trailer. So just to repeat the steps, we emptied out the water from the hot water heater, then opened up the low point valves to make sure we drained any remaining water from the water lines. 
added about two gallons of pink RV antifreeze using the water pump and a special hose that the travel trailer has to uh, suck the antifreeze out. So we made sure that all the lines were uh, running pink as well as added some to the holding tanks. I turned off the valve to that suction hose for adding RV antifreeze. Uh, and then made sure that line was as drained as it could so that we didn't leave a mess. Uh, put the panel back and we should be all set. Now in the spring, you'll, of course you're going to want to flush all of that antifreeze out from the lines and then sanitize your water lines. And you can do that with bleach or vinegar, different methods out there that you can find online but you're going to want to make sure that you flush a lot of fresh water through in the spring and hopefully then the camper will do uh, well over the winter in the cold weather and you'll be all set for a great season of camping next year. Well, I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions, you can always find us at TravelTrailSale.com and if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really do appreciate it. Thank you.